Uh, Shalom. Okay, a brief history of the Apocrypha. Although the issues surrounding the scholarly study of the Septuagint and the Apocrypha are not identical, many of the issues are closely related to be sure those who oppose to the Septuagint ordinarily do so to base in a part upon the presence of the Apocrypha, which is a corpus. What does the document make it so clear the opposition to the Apocrypha um, itself has not been historically as uniform as modern authors would lead one to believe. What, Suet or what Septuagint uh, opponents need to keep in mind is that the Septuagint contains the full canonical Old Testament as well as these the less official books. A point not mentioned in the document below is that the official editions of the King, Ver uh, King James Version, aka Authorized Version, contain the books of the Apocrypha until they were expunged in 1796, like they always use. I made a video called The Apocrypha is Not Inspired, and uh, it's one of these books that these guys and these groups use. This is nothing but the Apocrypha, I'm going to say it like this, Apocrypha is nothing but a history book, talk about Greeks, Ptolemy, the Ptolemy Philadelphia, the Maccabees, this is their book, but this is not a Bible. I don't use this as a Bible or reference or any spiritual inspiration. It's not inspired by Yah. Anything hidden is not of Yah. Uh, Yahuwah Dialahim does nothing to reveal it, his secrets unto the prophets. Uh, Amos 3 and 7, that's what it says. Uh, check that out and make sure you read that because you got a lot of people use books and and like I just hear like this red book right here, um, the Apocrypha. But uh, I've read it and it has some interesting stuff but it has a lot of flaws to it and it comes to my conclusion I never preach with it. I try to understand who the Maccabees were and if anything, anybody that says Jews, that's not us. Those are the Edomites. Anybody that calls themselves Jews, Christians, Russians, whatever, those are Edomites as well. But all Edomites, like we said, they're not complicit. I don't know about that, but you know, others brothers may disagree. But uh, <clears throat> they think every Edomite is complicit. Yeah, we have a lot of conspiracy going on in history, like we do today, because we don't know what's really going on in the Mason's head. So I'm gonna read this. It says introductions to the apocryphal. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, canonical books. <clears throat> the meanings and uses of the terms the Apocrypha and the Deuteronomy uh, canonical and the word Apocrypha is used in a variety of ways that can that can be confusing in general order. General reader confusion arises partly from the am ambiguity of the ancient uses of the word and partly from the modern application of the term in different groups of books. The etymologically, uh, etymologically, etymologically, the word means the things that are hidden. Like I just said in Amos 3 and 7, most high is not hidden. Like it says, anything is not of hidden. He said, Yah, uh, who with thy, thy power, it says, does nothing to reveal it, the secrets unto the prophets. So anything from Yah, Yahuwah, is, from Yah is not hidden. That means, um, especially these apart, that's not of Yah. Anything hidden is not of the Most High. And as simple as that, because this book is showing you it's hidden, but by its, by it was chosen to describe certain books is not clear. That's right. And some have suggested that this book were hidden or withdrawn from common use because they were deemed to contain mysterious or eccentric lore. Yeah, lies and deception. That's what it has in it. And to prof to profound to be communicated to any except the initiative compared to 2nd Ezra 14 and 45 and 46 and I'm going to read those scriptures I mean not a scripture but I'm going to read the, the verses they try to have scriptures and verses trying to make it look like a Bible and it says 45 and 46 let's read out of this book they call the Apocrypha I bet you they don't even read this and it says and it came to pass when forty days were fulfilled that the highest spake, uh, saying, The first that thou hast written to publish openly that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep it the seventy last thou may deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. And it says among the people. 
and I don't know why it means that I'm trying to say you get some wisdom but it says others have suggested the term was employed by those who led those who held that such books deserve to be hidden because they were uh, superior or heteric the heterical uh, thus it appears that it, uh, an antiquity of the term had an uh, honorable significance as well as the derogatory or one derogatory um, one uh, depending upon the point of the view of those who have made use of the word according to the traditional usage the apocrypha I mean uses apocrypha has been des uh, designation applied to the 15 books or portion books listed and many early editions of the Apocrypha, the letter of of Jeremiah, they want they try to use Jeremia, Jeremiah, but it's false, by the way, written by the sinners of Esau, is incorporated as the final chapter of the book of Baruch. Hence, in these editions, there are fourteen books. The fourteen books are not our books. These were made by the sinners of Esau. Like it says right here, here's the fourteen books. It says Tobit, Judith, like y'all know. A lot of people get Tobit, Judith, in these groups. Additions to the book of Esther. False. Contains Greek version of Esther. We don't deal with that. The wisdom of Solomon. A lot of people say it gives you understanding about the Egypt. Uh, it has some good stuff in there. But don't trust it. It has a lot of flaws into the story. Uh, Ecclesiastes, the wisdom of Jesus, son of Sirach. We don't deal with that. Because they think that's some secret. It's got a lot of. But Ecclesiasticus has some good stuff and wisdom, but it has a lot of flaws to it. You know, you can't trust it because a lot of people try to use it and don't even read what it says in the law in uh, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and uh, and Numbers, and and well as uh, Exodus. But it says Baruch, the letter of Jeremiah, so called, and prayer of Azariah, the song of the three Jews, were not Jews were Israelites, their Jews, the Edomites, their Hebrew Edomites, were Hebrew Israelites. Susanna, Baal, the dragon, 1st Maccabees, 2nd Maccabees, those are Edomites as well. 1st uh, Ezra, I made a video called the the, the Maccabees were Edomites. Uh, check that video out in Daily Motion. And 2nd Ezra, 1st Ezra, and Prayer of the Mass. But in the editions presented, ex expanded editions, including the following three texts that are of special interest of the Eastern Orthodox readers. Third Maccabees, four Maccabees, Psalms one and Psalms one hundred and fifty one. These were Eastern Orthodox. We don't deal with none of these books. These books have nothing to do with the Bible. I expose the Apocrypha. None of these books is included in the Hebrew canon of the Holy Scripture. You hear that? It says none of these books are included in the in the Hebrew canon of the Holy Scriptures. All of them, however, with the exception of Second Ezra are presented in copies of the Greek version of the Old Testament known as the Septuagint. You heard that one, did you? The old Latin translation of the Old Testament made from the Septuagint and whoever made the Latin and the Greek, uh, that was the Catholics and the sinners of Esau again, the Edomites that were Catholics and Jews, they created this book. There was Grecia and there were also Romans and there were other various other groups in Europe and basically uh, they wrote this book as well the sinners of Esau as well try to make them separate but now they're all the same Esau had five sons people don't even know that and it says the consequences of many early churches fathers quoted from most of these books authoritative scripture at the end of the 4th century, Pope Damascus commissioned uh, Jerome, the most learned biblical scholar of, the, of his day, to prepare a standard Latin version of the scriptures, Latin Vulgate, like you know today. In the Old Testament, Jerome uh, followed the Hebrew canon by the means of the preface of call the reader's attention to separate uh, category of the, cap, uh, the apocryphal books, the subsequence of the copies of the Latin Bible, you have that out there today. Uh, however, we're not always careful to translate uh, Jerome's preface. And during the medieval, med medieval period, the Western Church generally regard these books as a part of the Holy Vulgate text, officially approved by the Roman Catholic Church. Like we say, the sinners of Esau again, and the Jews. 
contains these books incorporated within the, uh, the sequence of the Old Testament books. Thus, Tobit and Judah stand after the Nehemiah, the Wisdom of Solomon, and you know things and so forth. Ecclesiasticus and stand after the Songs of Solomon, Baruch, with the letter of uh, Jeremiah. Like trying to use Jeremiah as chapter six, and you know, on down. This is a brief history. And modern Roman Catholic scholars copy employed in 1566 to designate the two group uh, two groups of books terms proto canonical and deuter uh, uh, canonical are used to uh, signify respectively those books of scripture that were received by the entire church and being as it's being as inspired but it, it ain't inspired uh, I don't even have to read this this is information you can get this at uh, GNT E dot org and sit and look up a brief history of the Apocrypha. It's a long reading uh, kinds of literature. It's nothing but a literature, literature history book of the Maccabees, all the wars and all that stuff. And the Catholics went in that madness. They promote war and stuff like they do today. I don't get into it. It's a brief history of the Apocrypha. And um, I'm going to make another one talking about uh, the background and history of the Apocrypha. So with that, I want to say uh, Shalom.